All right, guys. Well, if you went to Bristol this weekend or you bought the pay-per-view, you already know you were entered for a chance to win Donnie 2.0. We'll be announcing the giveaway on that in about a week. We'll let you know. We'll fly in so you can come get this thing. Ladies and gentlemen. Okay, put them down. Put them down. Welcome to the ultimate nitrous giveaway. You guys remember the month of freedom? We did a turbo every day. We're back. And we're doing a nitrous kit every day till the end of the month. Check it out. Each one of these boxes comes with a nitrous bottle, just like what you see right here. Some of these are dry kits, some of these are wet kits. But listen, each one comes with enough to put nitrous on your lawnmower, your minivan, your grandma's car, your grandpa's golf cart, your golden retriever, whatever you want. And if you buy merchandise off of cleavesmcfarland.com any day, the rest of the month. The next day we'll be picking from that pool and sending a random nitrous kit to one person who purchases anything off pleasemanfraud.com. It could be an FF Straw hat, a Dr. Tune Mall hat, a No Bueno George hat, a Jack Stan Jimmy hat, a McFarland Racing hat, a Cletus hat, another Cletus hat, a Maddie shirt, a Dr. Tune Mall blower shirt, one of the long awaited tie fabrication t shirts, Woo! one of these My Car Eats Better Than Me t shirts, a Hell Yeah Brother t shirt, a Retro Cleese McFarland t shirt, or one of LS George's new shirts, or lastly, Jack Stan's new shirt. Maybe it's a baby onesie, or this baby onesie, or this baby hat, or this baby onesie or some of this sand spray wax or maybe some of these heat wave sunglasses doesn't matter as long as you place an order whether it's a sticker to some sunglasses any day during the rest of this month you could be getting a nitrous kit in your order and that starts today right now and you know what we'll even do two nitrous kits today because we got a couple extra but for now let's get to the live action hell yeah brother you're on the please me on youtube channel oh man guys we're back in town and we are uh Feeling good. Everyone made it home safe from Bristol. And today's video is more so about the burnout contest day of the Bristol event. And then I have a video that's gonna come out about the Crown Vic side, the Crown Vic race. But guys, look at this. We filled a quarter of a stadium for just burnouts. That is freaking amazing. Cletus and Cars Bristol was a humongous success. Not only with people showing up in person, but the pay-per-view did well as well. But today, real quick, before we get to Neighbor, I wanted to talk real quick about some controversy with the burnout pit. Basically, when we started up Cletus and Cars, I had access to better burnout cars than the other competitors. So I've always sat on the sidelines and I make my burnouts and then I pull off and everyone else competes for the prizes. And we've let the sport develop over the last several years. Bristol was the first time that we said, hey guys, James and I will not be on the sidelines for this. We are going to be competing and there is an independent group of judges that we have now hired to judge the burnouts based on certain criteria, which would be driver skill, burnout smoke, and overall performance. We talked about it in the driver's meeting, everyone was good with it. And granted, this was our first competition with a big prize, so you know, there's a lot on the line. I think we had probably six or seven methanol blower cars. So cars like Toast and Kill a B. So in my discussions with the judges, I basically said, hey, look, I want these guys to win this money. I really do judge it fairly so that if they win, they win. However, if James or I do really good, substantially better, and you think that we are the winner, we have to be the winner because if we're having a pro class, why can't the pros be in it, right? This is my whole theory. So had this discussion with the judges and we had the burnout competition. If you guys watched in the live stream, James won the pro class. And that sparked up a little bit of controversy with a couple drivers, not everybody. A lot of the pros understood that was the reason that we got the judges and we did this legit, but other guys thought that they had maybe won and that that money was supposed to go to them and they didn't think that James won, which this has really made me rethink, you know, should James and I be in the competition? I spent a lot of time thinking about it. I definitely want to compete. Like I don't want to have one of the best burnout cars in the country and not be able to compete with it. I want to win trophies too. Granted, I know it's our own competition, but we want to compete. That's just in our blood. We love competing. I don't think James and I are going to pull out a competition. However, we are going to change the way we do things. For one, we're going to have bigger burnout pads so that guys aren't crashing their cars so often. We have the small burnout pads, which I really like, but there was a lot of accidents, a lot of damage on the cars. Number two, we're going to change the way we pay out for the burnout competition. So instead of first place getting 90% of the money, first place will probably get 60% of the money in the pot, and then it'll pay down through maybe the top five drivers so that everyone who 
finishes in the top half of the class can kind of go home with some money to pay for the trip. It's expensive to get these cars out here, burn tires, potentially hurt engines, potentially crash your car. It's super expensive, so we want to pay down further. And then there's several other things. So we're kind of starting a committee of pro burnout drivers in the US so we can talk about these new rules and new ways that we're going to judge things, the criteria, and we're going to define all that to a much further level as we get into this. I didn't want this weekend to go down with James winning, I'll be honest. I definitely wanted someone from outside of McFarland Racing to win this first one with us in it, but James did a hell of a burnout, dude, and he deserved it, and the judges gave it to him. So. It is what it is, but going forward, we are gonna work on this with the drivers who are now competing in the pro level class and hopefully make everyone a lot happier. Now, on a much, much sadder note, we must show you what I have done to old neighbor. Well guys, I did some damage to our boy neighbor. I know you guys aren't gonna be happy with me, but uh, here's the footage of how it happened. <laughs> sure that's the only reason that that somehow did not blow wide open wow. to a methanol. I think that's the hardest hit we've had in a burnout box. That was a huge lick. That was huge insanely lick. bad. Drew! Unreal. They had a buff. God dang, dude. They cranked it. My God. 
You did good. Right. I know, I wanted to do great. I needed the hardest tip in of the day. There wasn't enough grip to hold me back. Can you guys fix it for me? Yes, sir. Alright, I'm gonna I'll send it to you guys. Wow. Is that not a sign? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, it's bad. The adrenaline wore off, guys. It's much sadder now. Much, much sadder now. That's a cruncher, dude. Yeah, I don't think that uh, dashboard did you no good on this one. The door's still closed. Yeah, I'm torn. The quarter's under the door, but it's still That closed. is ridiculous. Ty, I am so thankful that you reinforced that fuel cell for me, buddy. That uh, that really was nice. That Didn't leak a drop of fuel. It was a scary moment, that's for sure. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, neighbor... It's pretty well destroyed on the on the back half here. The door's still closed. Quarter panel's under the door, but they still closed. Yeah, you know, I w right when I got out of the car, I said neighbor 2.0, whatever, will change over the chassis. But I'm tempted to give a frame machine guy a shot at this. Yeah, I mean, it'd be nice to save it. Yeah. If you can instead of just replace it with another car. And it's not that we mind replacing it, you know, as far as like swapping stuff over. That's not that big of a deal. It's just, this is neighbor 1.0. I just, I don't know see this. if I can bring myself to get rid of it. The frame. That's the frame and that's the mount that's supposed to be here in the frame. That's supposed yeah. to be back over here. Yeah. It needs some love. So we got a couple options. We can either go to the frame machine and, you know, pull everything out. Or we can chop off the back of the car and tube it. Yeah. Like the back of Leroy. Could do a tubular back half on it. But, man, you know... If you guys have seen what frame machine guys can do, it's absolutely insane. I mean, they can really bring a car back from stuff you wouldn't believe. So I'm really tempted to give them a shot. I just got to find a good frame machine guy down here in Bradenton. We don't really have one. But I'm telling you, I think someone could make something out of nothing here. The actual car itself seems pretty much fine. It's just these rear quarters are shot. Yeah, the important part the frame. is uh, if you look at like back here in the trunk space, None of that really moved. So they should be able to pull this strip off, drill all the spot welds out, and re-quarter yeah. the back of the car and repan the back area. Yeah, it should be brand new It'll again. Be savable, yeah. yeah. I mean, the quarters were already wrinkled before, yeah. so. The frame rail is going to be the big thing, and we have plenty of crowd vix if we need to section a frame rail out and put a new frame rail in. Yeah, it, yeah. If they can't well, pull it straight. Well, we could just but... use tubes. We should probably make it stronger anyway. Yeah, yeah. So the craziest thing is that our boy Ed still there after the whole window got taken out that's pretty crazy coincidence i don't know but uh we'll take it as it is this is insane yeah from all the tire fires burning the seam sealer out of the seams for years yeah. when this impact happened it just literally separated all the sheet metal you can see all three yeah. different pieces it's not good hey but it runs and drives perfect i mean i still did a burnout after i hit the wall you kept going for like what a solid minute and yeah no two. it runs and drives perfect I was running it's, around freaking out because of the fuel cell in the back. And you're just well, in. I spun around. I looked if there was a leak. I was like, all right, there's no leaks. So I think we're good. But I was worried that we weren't going to be able to get the wheels and tires off it. So I stopped before they blew. This thing, uh, she's had a hard life. Yeah. But uh, looks like we're going to try and save it, guys. Everything else is in uh, pretty good shape. Neighbor will return. All right, guys. Well, let us know what you think. And if anyone has a frame machine in Bradenton that we can uh, get on with some pros and try and unwrinkle this thing, let us know. And let me know what other changes you guys think that could happen to the burnout show that, you know, might make it better. We're all open to suggestions. And thank you guys so much for tuning in to last weekend's event. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Do it for Dale. We will freaking see you later.